Can you guys hear me now? I mean, this is on my computer. This is the computer audio and I feel like it's not that good and I have a mic. I have a mic right here that's really nice that I'm trying to connect and it was working a second ago. Why is it not working now is the question. Sounds fine, I mean, yeah, but I feel like this is even spicier. Let me give it one more shot. Properties. It's like working on all my cameras. Um, yeah, okay, I get that it sounds fine, but let me just try one more. So annoying. All right, well, I don't know what's happening, so we'll just use the computer. That's fine, as long as you guys can hear me. Um, yeah, right on. So hope you guys are going to be uh, painting also. You could try to take a screenshot of this portrait, uh, which we're going to paint in oils. Let me bring this over here. Oh, you can kind of see what I'm doing. I got my easel right here. I also have another monitor just to view everything. This is really irking me though, like, come on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Where's my mouse? <sighs> and, uh, it's just a shame because I set it all up, you know? Lock. Maybe unlock. You know what I want? I want to listen to it on my own phone. I know I'm being just such a hardo about it, but let's just, uh, I'm a mute. Oh, well, I guess I can't. I'm a mute. Oh, well, I guess I can't. Oh, it sounds fine. Okay. <laughs> um, okay, let me post this on Instagram so other people can come to the stream and then we'll start painting. How's everyone doing? Let's get a picture here. Yeah, I'm in this uh, this hat because I thought it would be funny and got to have a hat for painting for my hair at least. All right, so paste, allow paste. I know, I pick my nose more than anyone. And that's a fact, but I won't do it on stream. Okay, so uh, this is gonna be a tutorial, I guess. Um, I'm just gonna walk through all the steps. This is my um, oil painting sketchbook. Oh, 
little frozen here. So now this is lagging. Come on, guys. What is this? I got a new computer. Um, and yeah, it's a Mac. And I used to, I'm running OBS, but. Everything looks good. Why don't we go like this? Oh, gosh. Sorry about this guys, just redoing these cameras. I'm big, I gotta go smaller. Um, that's life though. Streaming is not easy, but I think we're back. And <laughs> I guess I'll just be monitoring, monitoring. Uh oh. Oh, so this is now working. My mic. We back. I think we're good now. Okay. So now it says my nice mic is working. I don't know if the quality is different for you guys. Okay. Pierre Edelman, Snowy. Thank you for that. So the portrait, portrait is actually of my girlfriend. I took a bunch of really amazing pictures recently because I'm putting together a few videos of like portrait tutorials, really sort of in depth that I'm really excited about. And this is just my um, sketchbook, my oil painting sketchbook that I've shown a bunch before where it's just like 11 by eight inches. Um, there's a bunch of pages. Um, and I try to keep these portraits, which are like sketches around two hours. So I'm assuming we're gonna go two, over two hours. And I'm gonna to try to walk everyone through, just doing a quick portrait sketch. I guess I can try to show this right here. Um, I'm just starting with like a burnt umber color, but might add some red just to brighten it up, not go too dark. Um, sounds fuller and better. Well, love that, the audio. <laughs> Hopefully it won't freeze on me, I don't know why, but um, so I think the first thing I think of um, when attacking a portrait is thinking about what I'm painting, which is a head, which is sort of an oval shape. And we want to place the head on our canvas, right? And where are we going to place it? Where is it going to be sort of centered? And an easy way to do that, besides starting with a paintbrush and doing an outline, is actually sort of like massing it in. Um, and this is kind of... I don't know if you can see that. I just sort of put this glaze on. Um, and what I like to do sometimes, especially for really quick stuff, um, sort of take a paper towel and just find, find this oval shape. You know, we want to start it up here. We want the chin to end maybe around here. You know, nothing crazy, but this just helps sort of find the mass. Yeah, so I'm going to get a million questions of this, guys, and I'm going to try to look at the chat as much as I can. This paper is just like 300 gram GSM paper, multimedia, and then I gesso it a few times. I have a bunch of videos on it. You could go on my channel and check out exactly what it, all this is, how I prepare it, but it's just gesso. It's just a few layers of gesso. 
Anyways, let's sort of find this. So again, I want to say that this is kind of confusing me. Let's do this. Yeah, that's better. Yep. Okay, because I'm looking over here. <laughs> I'm looking over here. You know what we could do? I'll show you what I'm going to do. I don't know why I mixed this setup up, but we're going to go like this. And then we're going to bring this tchotchka like that. I know it's nice and big for me. Um, All righty. All right, so this is a beautiful portrait. Awesome shadows. We're going to get into that, but let's... Uh, So that's the top. We'll say this is the bottom. Okay, I might have gone too big there because I want room for the ear. And this is all very simplified because I'm just uh, figuring it out. This is nothing set in stone. I mean, a lot of people get afraid of like using paint to sketch because, you know, with a pencil you can erase and you can do all these other things, but you can do the same with painting. It doesn't need to be so serious and um, so this is all you know I don't think correct at all right now but we're gonna find out and we're just trying to narrow down big ideas to smaller ideas Um, and generally, rule of thumb, not rule of thumb, but, oh, I switched this. I didn't even see. Okay. My bad, guys. Hopefully that fixes it. I didn't even notice that on stream. <laughs> yeah. Come on, baby. Turn. Um... Okay, let me uh, let me do something like this. How about I got an idea? Oh, the struggles of technology. Let's go like this. Whoa! Oh, wait. We don't want that. Uh oh. Okay. Okay, apologies. Okay. <laughs> Nice. 
Okay, we got 130 people in here. What's up, everybody? If you're just joining, we are certainly getting down today. Um, all right, so what I was saying, general rule of thumb with these portraits, so she's sort of looking, obviously, to her right, our left, into the distance, and when placing a head, it, it would make sense to put it directly in the middle, but usually you want to lead the head and give the head a little room where they're looking. So. She's looking to her right, our left. So we're, I did this, you know, sort of um, instinctually leaving room over here, um, you know, just cause she's kind of looking that way. So you give space to where she's looking. Obviously in the center, you wouldn't know that much of a difference, but you could see in a lot of portraits, you know, um, you, you, you give room to that size side. This is just a sketch. Um, it's not that big of a deal, but it looks like we replaced it like that, and that's sort of the general idea. Now, um, I'm measuring here a little. Um, all right, so let's let's break this down. I gotta remember to talk. You get so focused. So eyes generally in the <clears throat> in the middle. You know, we could say if this ear is correct. And the eyes are kind of like right here, right? And that's also sort of like the midway distance between the length of the face, right? So we can kind of just assume. The eyes are going to be generally in that vicinity. We could assume that the eyebrows are somewhere like right here. Um, I want to fix a few of these lines just for my brain. Right, she's got some hair right there. Um, let's see, she's got a bunch of hair right here. And then we can kind of say, okay, how is our, how is the top of the head looking? Okay, slowly breaking this down. Okay, and this is way lower. Uh, but that could all be changed. Let's focus on some features. Oh, a good... Um, So a good landmark also is this neck. You know, we could use plumb lines. That's like basically what I'm doing in my head, but also what I measured before. And plumb lines, if you don't know, is saying, you know, once you have sort of something down, you could sort of refer to other things via the image. So you could say the bottom of the ear, if I draw a straight line from the bottom of the ear, does it match up with the nose? Not really. You could do this to yourself on the screen. The nose is a little above that, right? So we could say that the nose kind of is right here, um, generally approximating here. We could also do, um, we don't have much in yet, but you could say like this center, you know, of the hair or the hair parts, which I don't know if it's really in the right direction for me, but you could say that that straight line down from that sort of hits, you know, the edge of the nose. So we could say that's sort of the most right of our nose Uh, 
Um, again, I'm just approximating here. You know, if you really need to do a race, you just erase like that. It's a Blick, Blick Art Materials. Shout out Blick. Um, and uh, you know, these are complex shapes, right? The nose, especially with the shadow and the highlights, these are very three-dimensional complex things. We're making placeholders right now. Um, of these shapes to further develop later. And we're sort of just looking at placement right now. And um, I don't think we're super close to the final placement, but that's the only job we're really doing right now is trying to find these placeholders, see if they're um, somewhat right. And it may not look like uh, this subject at all right now, but I don't really think it should. Um, this right eye, and again, this is a cool portrait because it's super, um, it's super contrasty. Like if you squint your eyes, which we'll get into for the values, her right eye, the left eye, you could hardly see. And there's no point in going in in a two hour portrait and trying to, you know, give a little light to the eye. We're just gonna probably make this whole side really dark. Um, and we're gonna figure it out, but it's, that's kind of cool. Let's see. Um, very loose, very loose. Staying loose, staying loose. Not really concerned too much. And this is all hair right there. And that's sort of all hair. Okay. Um, Alfonso, yeah, I mean, generally we'll stick to like warm shadows and cool highlights, um, but I'm not really sure. Now, I don't think this is very right at all. Um, and I want to sort of do a big check on it. And the way you could kind of a race and sort of reshape is getting like a brush like this, dipping a little into some mineral, um, odorless mineral spirits. I'm using 
Gamsol, and you can kind of chisel away like that. You see how I kind of just chiseled that away? Um, I know that this is like way too... Something like that a little more. You know, a little wider chin. That looks a wee bit better. Um, and we're just finagling. We're finagling really hard. Okay, I also see that I think I need some room I need to widen the face a little. And that might mean moving the ear. Um, but this, I like to use this angle. Okay. And that in turn would sort of push all this back, right? And her hair would kind of be more like something like that. And again, slop zone it looks like, but it's actually coming to a point that is a bit closer to what we want. Um, and just for, just for um, sake of this stream and tutorial, I'm going to start filling in some shadows, um, but with colors that I'm not going to use for shadows. So this would be like technically a grisaille, but I think this will help illuminate and honestly help find um, more of the shapes and the proportions. Um, so let's do that. So for example, hair. Right, this is all dark. And here is all dark. All oh, this is shadow. This is mega simplifying, right? Okay, and I'm constantly squinting, constantly looking here. We can come back with more solid lines.
Okay. So it's just slowly, 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 slowly looking more and more solid. Again, still approximating. Um, it looks a bit wonky, but we're gonna hope to figure that all out. Yeah, this is the first sketch. Oh, uh, Grisai. Mr. Gesso, Grisai. Grisai means like a painting of only uh, like using white and black. And so you could get all the values you want, but it's like a, it's like a black and white painting or like burnt sienna and white or any color in white. Um, so ciao. So we're pushing this side of the canvas more than I would wanted, but that is okay. That is okay. Comes down sort of like that. So I was close with the ear, to be honest. We can hardly see the neck pop out right here. But that's where the neck is and the hair just comes over completely. And then we got Sort of the sideburns. And this eye is sort of completely wrong via our new move to all this other stuff. So there's attributes of her hair that aren't completely right, but we could fix that when we start painting. And another huge like um, editing tool is gonna be just laying in the background because that could help us shape sort of this silhouette that we've just worked on. Okay. Um, but before we do that, let's, let's get a little closer with the features of the face. Um, and for better or worse, those shadows are correct, but <laughs> the focal point of this painting, you know, is the eye, right? The light is gonna hit like this quarter, this third of the painting, uh, and that's what we're amped about, but the eye, we got, we want to nail the eye. And eyes are diabolical, or for me, it's pretty, pretty hard. Um, so let's think. Let's use our noggins. Blick art materials with the awesome little blurbs and tips. I love that. Um, I love that. I love that. Okay. So I like the placement of this eyebrow. Okay. I do indeed. So let's use this as sort of the, the marker. That might have been too much. I 
I'll be careful here. Um, actually, I don't need to be careful at all, really. I just want to not have to repaint this four times because I want to get moving for all of y'all. So that is actually the shadow of the eye socket sort of thing. Um, and I could use that to sort of put the eye right there, ish, right? We'll call that the ish. That as the eyebrow, okay? So a big, big question mark there, but before it was way over like here, I just, oop, before it was way over here, I just pushed it back that way a tad. And you're gonna see how simple and broad we're gonna be with the colors that come into play here, um, but how quickly you could sort of refine it. And so again, if you're expecting some like super developed painting, that's not what we're doing today. We're doing uh, a quick sketch and sort of how to, how do we best find likeness and the techniques? So, okay, we kind of have this shadow. I don't want to be beholden to this shadow, but we can kind of say that that's the chin, right? That's the shape of the shadow on the chin. And you could look for yourself um, what shape that is, and that's more or less the shape, right? The drop shadow under the lip, which is this, and then sort of that diagonal, because the light's coming this way, and then sort of wrapping under that chin. Um, and we could kind of do the same for the lip. Um, in general, the top lip is always in shadow because it's sort of facing down from the light. And then the bottom lip faces towards the light. So the bottom lip is usually in light. Um, and we can kind of, we can kind of accentuate that by saying, um, or just filling in top lip. Something like that. Again, not the exact placement approximation of the feature, but as a placeholder to move on to sort of the second stage. And again, with this eye, I'm not even going to touch um, and also this shadow comes like all the way like that. Now, I have some pressure here because I got to make my girlfriend look good, but um, we will figure it out. So the one thing I'm worried about is the forehead being a little small right now. So let me just think and look and observe. Right here we got sort of the line of your bone. You could separate that by a plane. This is a plane change right here. And then we could sort of measure. It's like how much of this hair You know, I'm just constantly observing. So I'm observing, say, like, let's say 
we're taking this for fact as like the outline of the major features. What is the distance between the end of this eyebrow and the beginning of this hair, right? Like what is this distance? So I'm looking at that. Does that look too big or too small? I'm looking at sort of, well, I didn't put the nose in yet. We should do that. Um, I'm looking at where this end of the mouth lines up with the eyeball, right? It looks like it's sort of on the inside, so the mouth might be too big. I might have to push the mouth over this way a little, right? Um, because it ends like right there, so that might not be correct. It might need to end a little earlier. Um, again, these are all things we can fix very easily, but this is what I'm going through all around the painting. Every single thing I could measure. I'm looking at the ear. The ear looks too small. And it also looks just not the right shape. So more like that. Um, <laughs> Alicia, bone apple teeth. I like wanna... Oh, thanks, Blick. Gosh. Blick just coming with the compliments and the art tips. Wonderful. Yeah, I agree also, not for myself, but um, in terms of actually learning how to paint, watching artists paint is a great way to learn because you watch how they hold their brush, how they load their brush. Um, you know, all these little nuanced things that adds to your practice. You become a mimicker, right? A copycat. Not in a bad way. You know, I'm not stealing this intellectual property because this is just a picture of a person. Anyone can paint it, but it's the process of replicating that image onto, you know, a canvas or a piece of paper. You want to absorb people's techniques, um, and that's how you learn, right? That was sort of the, a theory of learning. So, live painting is awesome. I wish more artists do it. I'm definitely not the only one who does it, and I think I don't do it enough, but, um, yeah, that was like, whoa, I just hit my camera. I had one year at the Artist Students League in New York on 57th Street, which is an atelier, um, which all you do is like paint and draw. And uh, that like eight, nine months I was there, I, more, I learned more in that year than I did like, you know, three or four years combined. Albeit I am like more self-taught than not, I would say, but... Um, It was an insane year of growth because I got to see so many artists work. And I was like, in terms of experience, the least experienced. So I was literally surrounded by like a dozen um, artists who were like so much more experienced than me. And I just would nonstop watch them paint. So that might have been a better, a better forehead change. I'm squinting, I'm looking. This still deserves shadow, right? Like this. I wanna nail down this nose and then we'll start using some color. Yeah, but there are some artists, I'm just reading the comments. There are some artists who are so good they could do this like first try. I'm like pretty inconsistent with painting um, and for a lot of like the bigger portraits like that I've been working on, especially the tutorial I'm doing, I'm coming out with a huge like two hour tutorial on portrait um, painting. I use grid lines and that helps you navigate even faster with more accuracy. If you don't know what a grid is, look that up. But um, So here's something else that I'm looking at. I'm looking at the distance between the bottom of the nose and the eye. And I'm also looking at the distance between uh, the, like the top of the lip and the bottom of the nose. So if I put the line where my nose was before, I think it would be too short, a too short a distance. 
So I think I just have to move this up like a lot. Sort of like that. And then we have a solid, solid amount of room between the lips and the nose. There still could be a bit more. I mean, this could also be the lips. Um, if you catch my drift. So again, that's the biggest skill is comparing and you're not guessing, right? We're guesstimating, but we're guesstimating with evidence from plumb lines and constantly comparing from our reference image. Now, I think it can even be like that. And we got a beautiful nose here that I always love to draw, so I wanna nail that. How, oh man, it's already 650. All right, we gotta get, we gotta bust a move coming up here. And again, to help with my Another good thing to use that I like to have handy are Q-tips. Not for your ears. Not for your ears, but for your paintings, right? So we can kind of be like erasing, right? We're Um, now I'm starting to, starting to think that I gotta move the lips down. Alrighty, so let's just call that good for meow. And let's start bringing in some more color. Sadly, I don't have a, um, a camera on my palette, but what I'm gonna do is just hopefully move this bad boy, not unplug anything. And then you can kind of see what I'm working with over here. Um, so since we started, I've only been working with burnt umber and a little bit of cadmium red, earthy colors. Let's, uh, we're gonna do the background because that's what I like to do. I like to sort of take away the background and really give ourselves a solid silhouette. So let's do that. And I'm going to use ivory black and yellow ochre to make sort of like a nice faded green. It's a great color. If you can see that. Now the background of this um, reference photo is like Switching gears with the hat. Background of the reference image basically looks black, um, but that's a little boring to me. I wanna bring a little color in. Again, this is a sketch. You can do whatever you want. I think we're definitely gonna go past eight o'clock, but that's fine. Picking a slightly bigger brush here. This is a filbert. I love filberts. Some people like flats. 
I use flats as well. Here's another filbert, um, which just means it's curved. All of these things in painting are overwhelming when you start out, but um, it's all sort of just preference. You know, there's no right or wrong thing. It's just the only way you're going to figure out what to use is using it. Um, it's not, you know, it is wet. We got a question, does it need to dry a bit before adding color? Um, and no, you know, ala prima portrait painting means wet on wet paint. Um, and that's sort of like the great thing about oil that it stays wet for a while. Some people think that's really difficult and challenging, but that's like one of the best attributes. And that also there's volume to oil paint. So we're not only blending it because it's wet on wet, we're sort of molding and sculpting the actual paint on the 2D surface, if that makes sense. That's a more sort of uh, advanced ideal, but um, yeah, wet on wet is sort of the point, especially for these two hour portraits. We're not gonna let any of this dry. I mean, when I used the background, which was just um, odorless mineral spirits and pigment, that evaporates and dries quicker, but we use more oil in here, so it's gonna be wet, but it's fine. It's totally fine. So let's look at this eye again. I'm kind of lining it up right at the end of the nose. Where'd that brush go? Adonde? Right, want to make sure that this lip comes out more. And that this nose sort of ends like there. And then this kind of comes like this. Right. Um, yeah, something like that. Um, and sort of the most important, in my opinion especially, like let's talk about this again before we fill in the background. This silhouette, right? Silhouette meaning like just the perimeter shape. If you filled this all black, if you filled the reference image black, what are these lines? And this is always what I struggled with in the beginning, this side. So it's like the eye socket dips in, right? We pop out with the cheekbone. And then we come back down at this angle, which is just like the side of the cheek, the face, and then the jawline comes in for another diagonal. All of those are so nuanced, right? Those are like four or five different angles, but the, you know, that's where you get the likeness. So again, I don't know if you've done that experiment in school where you take a silhouette shot and it's just a black shot like filled in, but you could recognize people just by their silhouette, right? So it's important to nail those for a likeness, um, obviously the eyes, obviously the distance between the nose, but like just, we're just thinking about a silhouette, which is very hard. And I still to this day struggle indubitably. Look at, like this, this is a silhouette. Boom, I just emojied it. This would be a side profile silhouette. <laughs> Emoji game, strong. All right. Um, now let's, let's start just filling in the background. Get all of this away. So we could work on that silhouette instead of just talking about it. And again, if you guys are interested in portrait painting, again, I'm not some master expert. I have some experience for sure. And I think I also have like a good um, vocabulary and perspective to a beginner. Um, and I'm making a portrait painting course, not course, it's like a two hour video. Uh, I'll, I'll post some of it on my YouTube channel for free, but then it's, it's gonna be like a premium video. I think it won't be more than $30, but I've been spending quite a while making it. And so, if you're into that, stay tuned. Stay tuned, I'll be posting it places, but yeah. All right, so, here's where we're gonna cut into the outline to find the silhouette. So, if you look at where this lip ends, right, the corner of this lip, and this looks a bit wonky, so, don't worry. Um, the, the bend of the jawline is under it, right? It's like right here. And I can kind of draw with the back of this. You can kind of see. Let 
And it's kind of like that. Does that make sense? I think honestly it could even go more. No, that's pretty good. Yeah. And this is, again, not set in stone. You can overpaint. If I cut too much into it, we can come back with paint. It's not oh so permanent, so. And then this is sort of where the hair is. Cathiria. Thoughts on sketching on canvas before painting? I do it all the time. Um, a lot of times before I do these paintings when I'm not filming, or I mean I'm filming but I'm not live streaming, I will sketch, I will sketch it out with like charcoal uh, because charcoal is really forgiving. It's really easy to maneuver um, and it's just a bit quicker than painting, I'd say, to find like the outlines and all those other things. And um, yeah, and then you could just paint right over it. You could paint over, oil paint is so robust, you could paint over, what you call it, you can paint over charcoal, you could paint over graphite. A lot of people like to do underpaintings with acrylic paint. You could go over acrylic with oil, but you can't go over oil with acrylic. Um, acrylic is great because gesso is like an acrylic binder. So, yeah. All right, so there's a little angle here that I like that I didn't really capture. It's kind of like that and then like that. That shows sort of like the end of the cranial mass. Eh, it's not that dramatic, but there's an angle in here that I like. Using straight lines is also a great idea because we always try to nail we always try to nail things, the perfect curvature, and they look so curved, and it's a round face with a round nose, but actually, you know, again, being draftsmen and draftswomen, to find those shapes, straight angular lines is sometimes uh, more accurate, and I guess like, I don't know what you'd say, like accessible, and it's easier for your brain to wrap around. But then Proko would say, you got to get your S curves and your C curves. Um, yeah. Okay, so I like that color. I love green. Green is, there's a lot of skin tones and greens. Um, but yeah, this portrait is awesome. We're not going to, we're not going to mess with like the turtleneck or anything. Um, but yeah. So I'm just trying to look right now real quick. I got this angle. I think that her chin pops out, or I mean her. You know, I think that. I think this comes out a little more. Because this angle is like this. Sort of, right? Yeah. And actually, yeah, I think this chin is way too, way too big. I think it's more like that. And so you can see I'm just drawing on it because I'm just re rethinking my brain. And then I think the head goes bigger. I think the head is like.
that. But maybe not. I don't know, time will tell. I think the lips go down. And also, this is sort of like that. Okay. Uh, moving forward. So now I'm going to mix up a few skin tones. And I know this is like everyone's favorite part or questions. <laughs> Lips are wider. Yeah. I think they are a little wider. I think the whole head is a little wider, to be honest. And I'm going to be pushing this side of the canvas, but that's fine. So, for example, yeah, okay. Okay. Also the bummer thing, especially for me, like you can, and this is like the idea of watching other people paint. And so when I was first learning oil painting, I would hear people go through all these steps. Plumb line, okay, this nose, the distance looks greater than it should be. Let's make that distance shorter or like the ear intersects the line here. And I would be looking at the same thing the person was looking and I'd be like, wait, what? I don't see that, I see that differently. And so, especially if you're coming too close to it, and that's why people always say, take a step back or, you know, look away for the painting for five minutes, which I think we're going to do just to take a quick break, like for five minutes so I can stand up. But you get so close to it and, you know, your, your perspective, um, you know, gets skewed. And so that's always an issue that I am certainly guilty of. Okay, we're cruising, we're cruising, we're figuring it out, we're figuring it out.
I hope you're painting along. Anna. Yes, Anna's here. Anna's another awesome YouTuber and painter. Shout out Anna. All right, enough dilly dallying. Let's get down to business. After doing one more thing, Yeah, I think the nose is a lot bigger. Maybe not that much, but. Oh, and it also gets cut off. Look right here. You know? Yep, just analyzing here. Let's just start filling in. We got ourselves a good rubric. Um, there's something not right about it still. did that could just use this later oops okay so for the sake of time I'm not gonna go into mixing colors that much but in general I like to use on my palette like two yellows two reds two blues burnt umber sometimes ivory black more um, sometimes sometimes not but um Okay, so I'm quickly just going to mix some stuff up. I'm going to be mixing like generic light and generic dark colors just to keep it really simple. The intricacy of like skin tones, there's no one skin tone for darker complexions or lighter complexions. Um, you can go so crazy. You could bring in so many different colors. And so it's really fun. But for today's sake, we're going to stick real simple.
Um, and honestly, there's a, a bunch of cool shadows in here um, that I'll try to get to. I guess I can kind of like put that in. Cool as in like temperature cool, not like too cool for school. Okay, I don't know if you guys can see those two colors. Light, dark, we're not really focused on anything else. Not focused on highlights. Although I can make like a hair color because we want some hair. That's sort of just this, some of this. And honestly, it gets a real red in places. Okay. Good tip, good tip, Blick. That should be your slogan. Good tips from Blick. Blick's good tips. All great, all valid. Yeah, we're definitely not worrying about dry times right now because this is so quick, but uh, different pigments dry faster. Titanium white tends to dry uh, faster. You know, there's, there's totally nuance and properties to pigments and also different brands of paint. I'm using several different brands of paint here. And uh, yeah, a, a good tip for beginners to learn mixing is never use black, only mix blacks with a burnt under and ultramarine. I have both of those on my palette. That creates a black. You could also create black other ways. Um, anyways, so. Let's use the shadow shapes to help map. That's always a good call. So that's what we're gonna do. So we're gonna squint to eyes, we're gonna look right here. Also, let's sort of find that as the eyebrow. And you may say this looks like the other colors, but this actually is a real color. This is closer to like a shadow shape than before when I was just messing about with some shadows. Yep, we're gonna fill that all in.
another huge dark area is obviously right under here casting a shadow on the neck of course again we're not going to really worry much about that turtleneck but we'll just um, put that in right there Okay, sort of next, we will put in some of the hair. <laughs> Good tip, Blick. Yeah, that could be a whole like short form content series. Everyone wants like a jingle, everyone wants a slogan. Now, where's the darkest parts of the hair, right? This is another tip, when we're putting in color, when we're starting to think of value. So simultaneously trying to map shadows and continue to flourish with our proportions in the correct shapes, we wanna think about the correct lightness and darkness of the color we're putting down. So this is sort of a middle darkish, not close to the darkest value. The darkest colors we have, colors or values we have is the hair right here, right? Just like basically black. The hair right here, it's basically black. Inside the eye socket closest to the nose, those are like the darkest parts. The cast shadow on the nose, which I didn't sort of allude to yet because we just want the shape of it that's more important. Those are the darkest parts. I'm not gonna be using a black, I'm using this actually just straight burnt umber. Um, we'll probably have to get darker. I think I will get a little darker, honestly. I'm gonna add some ultramarine to that. Okay. We're gonna fill in those other places that we think are also super dark, which is up here. Well, first of all, there's Right over here. Yeah, I think I need to move the lips down. That's what's sort of killing me. Under the ear here. But also all of this. It's sort of like right here, but that's more chocolatey. Yeah, I think, good eye, that Star Wars girl, but I actually think the chin is too big. But we'll see. Yeah, I haven't really developed this upper lip. Um, yeah, she said make it thinner like this. Or I guess down. It would be down and like this. Yeah, totally. Yeah, I'm kind of going to save that for the last. I want to get all these things around filled in and then it's sort of like we do all the dark parts and then we sort of do all the light parts and then we can go in between them all. Um, 
shoulder's gonna be like right there. We're not gonna put that in though. I can kind of just keep filling in. We're not gonna worry about it too much, everybody. Okay. Um, and also it's cool, you can see the volume start to develop, right? And also, let me just show you guys something real quick that you gotta understand while streaming. This angle camera is angled like this, so it's not straight on. So let me show you, this would be straight on, okay? So it changes the dimension slightly, right? From being over here. That's just where it needs to be for the camera. So keep that in mind. Let's zoom in a little. Okay. What are we doing? We were on a roll, we're on a roll. Let's keep rolling. Oh, thanks, MJ Pete. Yep, YouTube definitely doesn't like, the algorithm definitely doesn't like long, traditional oil painting videos. <laughs> but I love them. So here's a little highlight. Oh, need more. Here's some highlights in the hair. We're just gonna suggest them. Nothing too crazy. We can come back and make them way more brighter, way more bright, brighter. Right, like this, we're just suggesting hair stuff. Same with this over here, because it's catching a little light. But we're gonna maintain some of that stuff. Okay. Yeah, Samuel Thomas. Mr. Beast, quick, paced, fast, buying a million Lamborghinis and giving them to one person is a bit different, I'd say, than a slow 20 minute oil painting tutorial, but I get what you're saying. I do think a lot of people still love long form content and like, like watching 20 minute YouTube videos. I sure do. I watch a lot. I love woodworking a lot. I love like um, furniture, or people building like cabins in the woods and I just like watch them for the whole duration. Um, so chopping this hair off, there's too much hair here so we could chop that off that gives the illusion of the bigger forehead, which I was looking for before. Let's keep going, let's keep going. All right, oh, okay, the other side of the hair, right. So this, we could kind of just put that in. And you see how like kind of slow I'm going, but also methodical, I'm saying, okay, Let's do the dark parts, dark, 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 right? It's like almost paint by numbers. Um, not really because it's better than that and it's different and we're making up the numbers while we paint. But if you lay it out in your brain, it, it helps you, um, it helps you get there quicker, you know? And it helps you be more accurate and organized because we're dealing with all these elements, value and shape and color and hue. And so for me, at least I like to like be very, specific about what part I'm working on. And once paintings develop more, then you sort of are working on four things at once and it's a bit harder, but in these beginning, um, in the beginning you could still 
I don't even know what I was saying. I just heard a noise outside and I completely brain farted. So we're going to move on. All right. So I really am digging. I think we're doing fine. I think we're doing fine. That kind of wraps around. Not worried about hair right now. Thanks, George. What's up, George? And this video will be on the YouTube channel, so if you can't stay or you're, you're just coming in right now, you know, the whole thing will be recorded on YouTube channel as the live stream, so that's all good. All right, I'm a bit confused about this part of the ear now. Let's see, the tip of the ear, right? Let's do it with me, if you guys are watching. The tip of the ear kind of intersects, not the very top of the eyes, but basically the top of the eyes. Um, I think that... That's like, needs to be lower. And this hair definitely covers this more, this ear. And then it goes down a little. We'll call these the sideburns. Very slight though, right? Slight, slight, slight. And it's still like this. Okay. We have to fix that. Um, I want to put the pupil down. Because I think sometimes putting the pupil in a bucket hat for the win, brother. Putting the pupil down helps, but this is sort of like a shot mediumly in the dark. Not really. Eh, we'll go with that. Um, I like that. I like that. You know, we can kind of, we can kind of frame the eye a bit better. And like subtlety, this took me so long to learn. Almost doing less with the eye is more in these beginning stages. Okay. Pupil might be a little big. I might need to move that to the right a little. That's fine. That's fine. Um, we could also sort of try to put this in. Don't wanna get ahead of myself here. Um, okay, I'm just continuing to constantly look. Yeah, so this shadow needs to come back over here. Oops. I forgot that we got wet paint. I guess this was the color, huh? Not the problem. That is not the problem. Okay. That was a subtle move there, but I like that. The cut in. Um, what do I want to do? What was I doing? Okay, I was drawing sort of um, these shadow shapes because these got a little too big. 
Um, this is a mall stick, by the way. I know everyone asks. You kind of just lean it against stuff and you can rest your hand here so you're not touching the canvas. I think they're very useful. I use mine all the time in almost every painting. Okay, so that's where that is. That's where that is. Let's see if I can draw this nose real quick. Okay, then that's like down. Okay, so we're gonna switch to the light hue now. And things are really gonna move fast and start happening. Yeah, subtle. I mean, this is all like arbitrary. I'm, I'm speaking like very generically in a lot of these ways. Is my hand not bright enough? I think I need to heighten the exposure. I think that's a bit more natural looking. I look super bright from the webcam. Anyways. Um, okay, so I'm using a similar brush here. It's another Filbert but I'm gonna delineate sort of like my dark brush and my light brush to not mix paint and get muddy. Muddy just means all the colors kind of mix and it becomes brownish and you wanna maintain the vibrancy and whatever colors that you're looking for, you wanna maintain that. So let's see what, so that looks pretty similar to the background, but it's definitely different. It's way more um, skin tony. And again, I'm not going into the depths of every uh, part of her skin here because we don't have enough time, but um, we're gonna start filling this in. The general mass of the lights. And this nose is gonna need a bunch of work, but for now, I'm just gonna kind of like put it in and see. I think it's cool to see the portrait built this way. Um, and the, the most magical thing, again, if you're not into painting that much, magical isn't the right word, but I love painting because it's like very skillful and it's like an illusion. Even the most masterful painters, a bunch of them on YouTube, um, like a, a million people, Al Pei, Cesar Santos. Um, anyways, they, their paintings start out like this. Their paintings start out like mush. And then somehow through a given certain amount of time and some strokes with paint, it turns into insanely accurate, stylized, beautiful portraiture or, or landscapes or whatever, you know? So it's like pretty amazing the development of paintings, I think. And that like, you know, they all sort of start at this point of. Of whatever, just like mushy. Um, Those lips go farther, don't worry, I know that. And I don't like to use too much white in the beginning, but we can just assume that this entire neck that we could place in really quickly is, is a lot brighter than the tone I'm using now. So I could just put that in right now and just be like, okay, this is really white. Nice pale skin on the neck. Um, also, here's another thing, like, let's look at that shape that makes, like, that was so easy. It's just a triangle, and obviously there's, like, a big hair that comes through here that I didn't really place in, 
But if we match the angle, right, this angle, if we look at it, um, we could kind of say that that's pretty accurate as of now. We're gonna fill in this ear, which is quite bright as well. We're gonna fill this in. Oops. Right, and squint your eyes. Like, we're just trying to match these shapes. Forget about all the detail, the wrinkles of the ear. Squint and just look, like what are we, what are we trying to achieve? Big picture idea, slowly, slowly, slowly refine. Dang, I can't believe it's 740. I'm moving slow, but that's okay. I'm not really liking this sideburn. I don't know what's good. Okay. Right, squint the eyes. Does it look like Tori? A little. What's the name of my girlfriend? Um, something that can help me here. Well, we don't have to do that yet. This silhouette is not right. This comes way under here. That actually kind of helps. All right, so light and dark down. We are going to Wow, Jerry. God bless. Yep, love the mall sticks. Hello from Australia. What's up? Have I ever worked with pastels? Yeah. Um not uh not often, but I have. All right, so now we're gonna bring some more color. So I have this very, not super light. Like if you look at a white color, look at how bright that white is compared to this color. And that's good. Another issue that I dealt with when I was starting out to paint, especially with oils, I would use so, so much white. I would use way too much white. And generally we wanna keep things darker than we think, okay? When in doubt, go darker. Um, because as you paint, things get muddied again and it gets darker. And if you go too white, too light in the beginning, uh, you can't go any higher and it sort of ruins the whole value structure. There's examples on YouTube of that, of me painting and get so chalky. You could even see some back here. I'm just looking, but I've gotten a lot better at using less white. All right, now what do we want to do? We want to fill in the eye. We want to bring red to the lips and just start shaping out more and more. So let's do that. We're going to switch to a different brush here. I want to use a round. Here's the round I'm going to use, right? A little different shape. Um, honestly, let's pause for a second because I just have to go to the bathroom. So I'll be back in literally three minutes, okay?
All right. Thanks, Blick. Shout out, Blick. That was awesome. I had no idea they were going to come on stream and say what's up. What's up from India? Uh, that shows you that Blick is pretty awesome. An art store supporting artists. All right. Woo. Just replenish there. Ugh. So let's continue onward on this quest. I want to get quickly fix this silhouette again because it just keeps bugging me. Yeah, it's getting a lot closer. That is indeed getting closer. And honestly, this needs to go like way higher. It's just curve. Okay. So again, simply bring in more color. Oh, thanks. Yeah, I love the museum sketches also. They're not as popular, but they're like my favorite things to do. They take a long time to edit because I'm shooting with like three cameras, but it's quite, quite fun. Okay. So real quick also, we could sort of rock. Do I have another? Yeah. So I want to put I want to make sure to put this in, which is the under eyelid. Right. And also I'm figuring out so much here that I love. And hopefully if we do our due diligence, you know, by this time we can really figure out all of the, you get so familiar with looking at everything that we can figure out that this should be there. Or that looks like it should be like that more. And this honestly should be like this. Okay. Ish. Okay, not a big deal. We don't want to get too, too in the weeds here. But then also this. This is a big shape. And I think this is telling me to push up the eyebrow for sure. Actually, not for sure, just like a little. I know that may be annoying because it's like, I wish you could like have my thoughts internally, but these are all just things I'm discovering. In the moment, these are bad eyebrows, man.
Anyways. Um, I could fix that late row. I could also just go like this real quick. This is my favorite part of the eye to do. It's just the lid, which is super subtle. I might have to fix that later because that was pretty bad placement, but we're just getting that in. Slowly, slowly refining, slowly refining, right? Okay, let's slow down, slow down, slow down. We're going to do the lips. And you'd think it was red, and it is red, but it's like a very subtle red. I want to make it look natural, or subtle pink, rather. Again, we got this like I guess it's just like dark red or purple as a shadow. You just mix too many colors. Number one bucket hat wearer. He, okay, let's let's take that. I can't pronounce that name, but from the lips to the chin is the size of the nose. Yeah, just about. Yeah, mine looks pretty close. I think we're getting really close here. I mean, there's a shadow in the nose that's gonna make it look a little smaller. I have yet to get there. So let's figure that out together. I just kind of went berserk with mixing and I mixed too much and it turned into mud. So let's be slow and methodical about it. I don't need many colors, I just need dark red. Just like that. And so we can kind of say, okay, I gotta find this. And the lips are so nuanced also, like my goodness, the creases and all this stuff, it's like you can get buried in the weeds here. Um, but we're gonna say, we're gonna stop there and just chill with that, even though that doesn't look like I did much. That's what we're gonna rock. I'm 
I'm now going to mess with the eye. This is going to really help it bring it to life. Now the eye, white of the eyes is obviously not white. In this case, it's looking more blue than anything, um, but it's far from white. Looks quite dark actually. So now I said I wanted to change this a little. So I think I want to bring this back. We got a whole bunch right here. And it all looks pretty darn dark. So Right, we gotta remember to squint our eyes because I'm not squinting enough. And I'm trying to go too detailed here with this eyeball. And honestly, maybe we could just get away with going like this. And she's kind of looking up, so we got to make sure to go high enough. You know. Okay, that's getting a little better. Just a slightly. And that really wasn't the right move because we want to make her eye A great artist once told me if you could paint something, you could repaint it. So you can, you should never be afraid of sort of erasing marks. Okay. And I should have been using, I shouldn't be using black here is, on, is the truth, but I'm being lazy. Um, this should all be like a lizard and crimson. But. So I could just kind of redo that. And be like, boom, 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 boom. Okay. So that looks a little bit there.
All right, what's going on in the chat, guys? Let's keep it friendly. I'm getting just absolutely caught in this eye, so we need to like move to something else soon, so. Okay, we're gonna rock with that. I know that looks weird, but that is sort of where I wanna keep it. I feel the same way. Watching other people make me want to paint. Watching other people paint make me want to paint always, or people drawing. There's a lot of people in the city who just like draw outside. And every time I see them, I'm like, darn, I want to paint. And draw also. Okay, we gotta, we gotta move on from that. Um, I want to sort of bring back this eyebrow because Okay, um, I need to clean my palette real quick because All right, I just hid Jerry whatever his name was so hopefully it will be removed So yeah, there we go, so he's he's gone so we could just keep focusing everybody not too wary. Now, she kind of looks like a witch right now. Um, not going to lie. And so, that's, a lot of that is just the eye, but we also have to do some, a lot of work left. So, I'll be on here probably till nine. Don't stress, but hopefully you're, you're still entertained and enthused. I certainly am. Now, let me just talk about that. This is like a subtle part. Um, I'm hardly doing any work on this eye. We're just gonna kind of leave it like that. Maybe I'll bring some more lines. Um, we definitely want like a lighter line for the under eyelid, which is sort of the generic representation of like an eye there. And we can kind of go like this. It should be in line. Something like that, right? Like just catching some light to represent an eye. Now, she also looks like she's sort of frowning or scared. We're gonna fix all that, don't worry. I'm slowly just working, but I want to 
clean the palette real quick. So give me a second. You can kind of just watch me if you'd like. Um, a lot of these colors I can use still. So I'm going to try to consolidate, so like this brown, we just clean up and put right there. This is all just muck. That's one of my struggles also. I'm not the most efficient um, paint mixer. <coughs> Excuse me. I know how to mix paint pretty well, I think. I think my color theory is quite well, but in terms of efficiency of mixing colors and keeping a clean, organized palette, that's certainly not my strong suit. And I think it's really important. Uh, what's up? from Iceland, hell yeah. Um, it's important for me, especially on these later stages of the painting to sort of clean the palette. It helps me reset a little. Also, like I said, stand up, move back, and uh, resituate. Because then your colors become less vibrant, and I get too confused trying to remix, you know, new um, new paint swatches of color and whatnot. Anyways, so, 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 what are we doing? All right, we want... Analyze, analyze, analyze. Um, no, not for months. Um, Rude Mod Dude Hamburg. This painting will probably be wet for like two days max because it's pretty warm and drying here. I'm using also like the absorbency of the paper and the gesso. It, it's kind of hard to explain, but like, yes, yeah, some paintings with lots of oil can stay wet for weeks and weeks. Months, I don't think about months, but it certainly depends on the climate and a few other factors. Starting to think I can move the ear down a little, but we're gonna work on the nose. I also want to sort of brush off <clears throat> These paintbrushes that I've been using. Okay, so we're rock and rolling. We're getting close, and like again. You do 85, 90% of the work leading up and then you do a couple marks and the, the likeness comes and it brings it all together. It's like the best part. It's so satisfying and amazing. We're not really there yet, but we're getting way closer. So I wanna bring some warmth into this nose. Generally, again, another cheat code is that the forehead the forehead and up, skin. We're talking about just the skin. Forehead and head up is a little more yellow. From the eyebrows to the nose is a little more red, including the cheek. And then the chin is a little more blue. So I'm gonna do that real quick now. Subtly, 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 subtly. Finesse. Oops.
a more yellowish forehead. And I don't know if you can even tell, but that's definitely more yellow. Same value, but just a little more yellow. And the highlights haven't even come yet. Um, and this is, I'm doing this super quick. So this is like crash course. Now the nose is always more red, same with the cheeks. We wanna stay the same value, but go even more than that, honestly. Honestly, get some alizarin crimson. That might be too much, but I like to exaggerate. It's fun sometimes. It's certainly fun to sort of be like, okay, this is obviously the nose. It's super red and bloody. Um, bloody as in like the blood, you could see the blood easier. Forget about it, whoa. Um, also, this part of just the face, this cheek, you know, this is pretty red. Doesn't need to get that crazy. Okay. We go all the way down, sort of here, if we want. And then the chin kind of can leave that grayish. So that brings a little more life into the painting. You can even see, again, this is, is this too dark? Okay, I like that a little better. Um, and obviously there's a lot of red in the ear. We're gonna hardly touch the ear, guys, but. Um, so now I wanna move into this nose and I want to add some accents. And what I mean by accents is some really dark colors and I want to start doing that now to finally, to sort of, leave, sort of place these um, really important features, like the nostrils, for example, or the corner of the lips. Um, we need to do all that pretty soon. It's not dark enough. Okay, then a little smiles there, right? We're gonna fix this lip. This lip kind of curves over, um, but that's subtle. And that's like a subtle move. I'm happy with that. Softening some of these transitions. I don't have any of this color. Actually on this side, which I completely forgot about. We got the Rembrandt triangle sort of rocking, so we got light on this side. And it's a bit like that. Um, we're gonna fix that, don't worry. We just want that color in there. And I think this nose needs to be moved up just a smidge.
then we got this like warm, really warm, but shadow color under the nose. Just like all of this. Right? Darker than that, honestly. Honestly, way higher up. Well, not that high, but. Yeah, Lee. Not done yet, but I will be in for a reckoning if I can't make her look pretty, but we're not, we're not done yet. So we got lots of work to do. Whoa, good catch. And this honestly is where like it obviously slows down because you're dealing with small chunks of color more slowly. And I know that doesn't look right either, but we are getting closer to the idea. The painting that took the longest to finish was probably the painting right above me, the, uh, um, the Archway Elf. That certainly took me quite a while. What happens upper or... Okay, so I'm not really happy with this. Um, and this is like a cool color.
Wedgie. Um, yeah, I think I'll finish the sleeve eventually. I'm not, I'm like not in any rush for all of my tattoos. So, um, I like to get them like on traveling. I like to travel and get them. Uh, yeah, when the opportunity presents. Whoa. Okay, lips are totally wrong. Undubitably. We got this whole smile kind of coming down. Then also the the nose. I'm gonna simplify with sort of just like this orangey color. It needs to be darker. Okay, sort of like that. I'm gonna get our lights back because I need to. Yeah, this is uh it's coming along slowly but surely here. So, shaping, man, woo, what a task. But slowly but surely, we're gonna arrive.
Um, looking like her more and more. Okay, Brian, deuces. Yeah, you're, you're viewing at an angle, so it will be hopefully better than you expect when I turn it. Um, I need to... I gotta fix these lips, I gotta fix these lips, I gotta fix these lips, yeah. Slowly but surely. Okay. Working on it. Working on it. We are definitely working on it. The chin looks big. And I think that has to do with a cut I need to make in the chin. So again, if you're just watching, this will be up on the channel. So don't fret. It will be available to watch infinitely. Um, so let's take a break and reassess what our next steps are because we're getting, we're doing a million things at once. Yeah, I'm going to finish it. I mean, finish the sketch, right? This is just a sketch. Um, I'm talking to the camera a lot and dealing with the stream, so this is taking me longer than usual, but also I want to make it good because it's my girlfriend and I want to make it good for you guys, but all the highlights coming in, I, I just, you can't imagine how much it's gonna change, but I will just wait to show rather than say. Now, the nose needs to be shaped, the bulbous part. Um, I want to use this round. So I'm gonna start mixing a lighter color. Um, a lighter, more vibrant color. I think this will do. Red for the nose. Okay. Don't really know if that looks right, but it kind of does. Ish. Okay. And then this actually is like that. Right, and that's sort of the nose. Simplified nose, very simplified nose. We're gonna keep that for now. Okay, crease, check, subtle, but powerful.
Now, I have a lot of gray sort of skin here that is not, like this is sort of all subtly skin. Okay. And I get how this is like. Okay. Sorry, I'm focusing really hard. I'll paint too long, love it. Okay, so I'm gonna sort of do the ear as quickly as I can, just really quickly placing in these shapes. Something like that. Nothing crazy. We can bring a little more orangey skin into that.
Um, okay. Um, there's so many small little things that should probably look different. Like this eye, we gotta go back to this eye. I gotta see more pupil. Okay, like that. And then the right side is way brighter. Receiving all the light, all the juicy good light. Gonna make sure to capture that, of course. It's more like that. And I'm gonna make her eye like extra blue, like dramatically blue, just cause why not? Thanks, everyone's loving the hat. I'm so glad I wore it, even though I look like a, I don't know, like a Disney sailor boy, whatever you would want to call me, but I love it. Rocking it. Okay, now obviously you have to make that pupil way bigger. I'm gonna put some black down for this. A little black goes a long way. Okay, 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 okay. That blue is really dark up there. Cause there's so much like darkness in this. Yeah, like that. Yeah, like that. And what we need is another eyelid coming down. So we're gonna try to use just the lizard and crimson, even though it's a little transparent. Bring this down. Okay, not too shabby, not too shabby, not too shabby. I'll give you close-ups at the end also so you can check back. Um, we need a little, little spurt of light around those eyelids and then we're just gonna do the highlights and it's gonna bring it all together and it's gonna be pretty much done. So maybe it doesn't look like that, but we're getting there. Actually, it does look like that. I mean, for me, it looks like her a little. Um, it's not perfect by any means, especially the rudimentary ear and the lack of uh, turtleneck and the hair is all splayed, but we're getting there. Okay, that was an important line. like that one a lot.
Okay, so <clears throat> check, check, check. Let's just check our bases really quick. Yeah, we're gonna go in straight for highlights now. And this is great. I do need to cut this chin a little, so let's do that. And what color is that? Okay. Let's use the mall stick. Don't know why I did it like that, but that is the correct shape. I really didn't need that line, but. That accentuates. Right. Okay. All right, now we're actually doing highlights. I'm going to clean the palette super quick. Wow, it's been a long day. Kelly, can you make her eyebrow on your right a bit longer with the tail and up a bit? Maybe a camera's angle, but it's throwing me off. Yeah, this one right here you're saying? Yeah, I can splay that up a little. Um, with these highlights, I can definitely fix that. Now. I think we need more forehead over here. But that's what we're doing right now. We're mixing the highlights. And so for highlights specifically, like I wanna make sure my palette is clean because I'm mixing the highest value but also the most saturated. So you'll see this pink, you know, it looks like pink but it's a very dull pink compared to what I can mix. And I've done that on purpose to save my final highlights um, for last and to really pop out. And that's where you see paintings look more illuminated and better than like a, a real life, in my opinion, sometimes. Not this, because I'm not that masterful, but you will see that sort of <clears throat> affect. So we're gonna get some fresh yellow ochre. We're gonna get some fresh alizarin crimson, untouched by anything else. We're gonna mix that up as the base. Oh yeah. Oh 
Oh yeah. Now that's quite. You call that red? There it is. Boom. Okay. So look at that. Look how much brighter and more vibrant that is. That's not even close to white. I mean, it is closer to white, but it, like it's far from a white value. It's sort of just the uh, vibrance of it. Now I want like a brush like this, a tank. And we are going to throw this like this. Pupil bigger. Yeah, it could definitely go bigger. Um, and she's looking up. I, I'm afraid I'm going to miss the uh, the looking upness. She's like looking up and off to the distance above the camera, but we will get there. So let's, what are we doing? What are we doing? What are we doing? We're getting all this. This is good paint. Now, is that too... I mean, I could go lighter than that. Let's start simple. This yellower color, like I said. Honestly, way brighter than that. All right, so there's sort of that like core highlight there. Ooh, we got some mud in there, I don't like that. Right? We got some of this coming down here. That's for you, Kelly. We got this super important cheek highlight right there. And I honestly want to redo that because I want that to be more pink. And so we could just like, we can just wipe that in, you know. That can sort of remain, the remnants can remain. Um, and I want that a little pinker. Yes, 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 yes. Because remember, it's in that sort of zone. Forehead, eyebrows to forehead up, yellow. Eyebrows to nose, it's sort of like red, and then under nose is sort of like cooler, whatever color you want to go. It's just relative to those first two zones. So this is a lot. Oh. Oh, yeah. That is beautiful. And honestly, we have a lot more light here in general. And so we can kind of collapse this entire cheek-ish area to that sort of, not blend, but just overlay. Um, and bringing this side pushes that. Bringing this side lighter pushes the other side back into space. It's what we want. That gives a little separation of the jawline. That could be too dramatic. I might not need that, but we're gonna let that rock for now because these lines are very broad and nice. So let's come back to sort of like a middler, more middle. Like that. And this is like where all the yellow, the more yellow highlight is. And this is, I'm gonna really need to like finesse. Cause this whole chunk is just bright. Now that might look too bright and 
you could be right, but not relative to everything else. So just wait for it. Just wait for it. Okay. We got a whole bunch of the glint of the eye is very bright. So we got light there coming right down here, really showing up for like a greasy part of the face. We want to come back to this pinker area. And kind of put highlight there. And now we could also bring this big boy highlight. This is all bright, pretty much. And you see the life. I mean, this might look dramatic to you because I'm doing like very like uh, sectioned, blocked off highlights, but we're going to sort of blend it and mix it all in. It's going to look a little more homogenous. But um, man, that's fun. And if you squint your eyes now, squint your eyes really hard. Squint them. It looks way more dynamic, right? Heck yeah, it does. Heck yeah, brother. All right, we could bring this lighter. This has some like cooler, brighter, but not as saturated stuff going on like right here. Eh, I'm not even gonna fudge with that. What's up from Brazil? Um, you know, this is pretty dramatic and light. Ooh, I gotta come way more with uh, the eyelid. And the nose is generally brighter, but I kind of like the nose darker again to bring out that bloody version of, not bloody, but like, hey, the nose is red for a reason. Let's exaggerate it. And that's just style and that's just preference sort of situation. So we brought that. We also can bring this part of the nose a lot brighter. Hey. Right. Um, yeah, we're vibing. Just like a big highlight right here sort of thing. This can get some love. So it's all, you know, coming together. And we just took our sweet time figuring out each individual stroke. And what I will do, which is a cool technique, which I'll show you right now. Also, this ear is just looking lackluster in terms of the size. I mean, we're gonna have to fix that. But, um, what am I saying? What am I saying? Oh, we wanted to bring that forehead a little, right? Didn't I say I wanted to do that? And if I look now, yeah, yeah. It's curving more. It ends here, but it starts higher. Like that, right? Yeah, I think so for sure. For sure. Um, actually, yeah, and that being said, I think it can come like this, honestly. And this sort of is like, what's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? Hair's coming down. 
We got some shadows in those hairs. All right. Um, this looks a little weird. I need to tone that back. I want a little, uh, there we go. Oh, and this is actually, this is a bit, there's always like sort of like that brow shadow. So I can kind of exaggerate that. That helps a lot. And this goes into this, honestly, we can just kind of like, not blend, but bring each other together like that a little. Um, and this totally is like, looks like Tori, right? The right eye socket looks eerie. The right eye socket. So this whole thing, yeah, this is not, I mean, What I think I actually can do, let's get a darker brush. I think I could bring the eye socket. Like this boy. Kind of up more. Round that out. Yeah, I think that's a lot stronger. No, we're right eye socket. Okay, yeah, definitely. I mean, that's the point. I'm not going in there. It's such subtle value differences. I gave a little slight hint of her, um, the white of her eye and the darkness. And I kind of like how it looks. I mean, it does look eerie, but it kind of looks sick. And again, this is a sketch. So we're just suggesting that stuff there. We're suggesting the pocket as in no light hits it. So we can assume that it's a pocket. And we can also assume that there's another eye there because we have the eyelid, we have the glint or the whatchama, the whatchamacallit of the, uh, white of the eye. I am gonna go back over here in this eye real quick. I don't really wanna mess much up, but there's a few things I wanna fix. I think we gotta bring that highlight on the nose brighter because it's kind of blending in. It's almost white, so I don't know why I'm messing around with I'm trying to go so pink, but let's do that. But wow, it's nine o'clock on the dot. All right, well, we're gonna hard, hard, hard cut at 9.30. Three and a half hour stream. Um, yeah, the painting. So my camera that I'm streaming with, like you could see my hand, it looks sickly, almost green, right? And then you could see my skin like here. Um, this camera is like a cinema camera, so it's not looking as warm. It's, it's a bit more reddish pink in real life. And you'll see that through like the final pictures, I guess, but um, yeah, so what are we doing? We're doing... And again, if you're just new here, I'm working on a big sort of uh, tutorial for portrait, like a two hour video. Um, so if you're into that, stay tuned because that's gonna be really great. I think, I do believe people will enjoy that. These are just some crazy highlights, a little intense here. I, I wanna be subtle. Subtlety in painting is better, but you can't help but just blast some beautiful white here, like that, or like that. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring those back because that's a lot. But we also want some white on the eyelid, just dancing a little like that. We want the specular highlight on the eye. Um, and again, saving these for last is just like dessert. I know it sounds weird. Oh, but before we should make that pupil bigger cause I could do that. And it might honestly bring the life, bring some life into the portrait. And I'll do one more, actually I'll do a lot more before we end. That's the, that's the trouble. I want to just keep I want to just keep working. 
You can definitely overwork things. I'm at the point where I'm about to overwork it, so we gotta be. Okay. I like that move. I like that move. Honestly, if you want to get physical, I can go like this. Nope, I don't like that. So we're just gonna stop it. We're gonna stop that. We're gonna stop doing crazy moves. Stick to the plan, stick to the game plan. He came to slew, yes. Actually, one of the best moments of my life, not really, but kind of. Tolkien uses slew, S-L-E-W, in the Lord of the Rings trilogy. In the book, he slew an orc or something. And I read that and I was like, oh my God, that's so awesome. So the lips, corners of the lips need some work and they're gonna help us define the smile, the size of the mouth, all these wonderful things. So the corner over here, which is sort of a diagonal. And it's a little darker, subtle, subtle, very subtle. That's all I'm messing with. And then we got a little uptick, uptick, uptick. That's lower than that. So it's like that, okay. Just like that, boom. See that brings some shape. We can finesse the core shadow some more. Bring those shadows a bit darker. Nose is the most wonky part, but I think it works, like especially if you squint your eyes. Um, but it's definitely wonky, I'm not gonna lie. Honestly, yeah, but I'm not, I'm not changing it now. To be frank, what I could do is just like cut this sausage. <laughs> it's subtle. I could honestly, I should make the, the, the shadow under the nose is way more dark than that, way darker. What is grammar? So I should probably accentuate that because that will just define this nose properly. Yeah, I don't know how much that helped, but the nose is wonky. Let's just call it how it is. Um, and we're gonna bring now a sort of really fuzzy brush, right? This is synthetic. Okay, and I'm gonna kind of just wipe through some of these strokes to bring it together, to not seem so patchy. Just super, this is some subtlety, and I don't know if you can even see on camera, but it's necessary. I gotta add more of a highlight there, that's for darn sure. Okay. I also have to add a highlight to the mouth. Okay.
moving this all around. Okay, hey, don't overwork. We don't want to overwork. We do not want to overwork. We got 10 minutes left on the clock. Bring some more darkness under here. This deserves like a bit of pizzazz. Yes, indeedy. And then, okay, and then we're going to, what we're gonna do? What? What is going on? We're going to go like this, full bore. That has been killing me the whole time, but I've wanted to wait. Some sort of situation like that, honestly, no. So now I have to Yeah, like that. There you are. Then we could even get more physical with the highlights. You know, really just uh, go buck wild right now. See, like once you like you set yourself up, and then you know what where the other things go, and then you're just sort of. You're just in the pocket. Um, okay. Now, let's look at this and say what needs to be fixed. In these last few seconds, not seconds. Yeah, that eerie eye, we're gonna leave it, okay? <laughs> we're gonna leave it at. I do wanna come back with a brighter highlight because I kind of, you know, we're gonna use a big brush also because it deserves it. Yep, pink highlight on the lower lip, yes, Robin, absolutely. Absolutely, that's what we're getting. But first I wanna do a highlight somewhere else. But that is exactly what we need. After that, I'm gonna call it because, well, I might add some more light to this ear because this ear looks miniature. It looks small. Um, yeah, Rusty Johnson, great name. You have to stick it out with the oil. The first year, like that's what you're thinking. Like you gotta think about years. If you wanna oil paint, you want to do anything, you got to put a lot of time into it. My first 10 plus paintings were muddy, chalky, too much white, no color. You got to learn how to maneuver and apply paint and get all that, but it takes time. You can't give up. It's too fun to give up. It's too big, but we're going to rock with it. Now it looks really bright on the screen, but it doesn't look that bright here in real life. So I'm gonna keep it sort of okay. Done with that highlight. We could add some spice to right here.
but we gotta stop, okay? All right, and I wanna bring actually, I wanna bring the lips back a little. Blend that highlight on the temple too hard of a stop at the top of it. Yeah, 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 yeah. This right here, I agree, I agree, I agree. But first, Okay, so that kind of looks great. And then we just get some of this and we follow this right here. Oh, boom. So I'm gonna take this again, right? This blendy stick. Okay, yeah, we gotta stop because I'm gonna overwork it too much. What did I say? Oh, the specular highlight on the eye. Certainly the best for last. Certainly the best for last. This is sort of looking also. Um, like I need to put this over here. Yeah, that looks better. Let's see, I love your guys' advice. Advice. All right, yeah, we're gonna, I'm not even gonna probably touch the ear because that's just, it's just a lot. This ear is never gonna be good. Boom. Just like that. Now, I almost went too bright here. Like it's almost chalky is the thing because I just went, I went bananas with the highlights, um, but it's fine. And if you squint your eyes again, squint your eyes, squint your eyes next to both of them. It's not perfect. Proportions are perfect, but it certainly is a likeness. Um, likeness means it looks like, right? I don't know what my girlfriend's gonna say. She's probably gonna text me or I'll call her later and say, what do you think about being on the internet? Um, oh, the ears. I was like, what am I mixing for? Okay, even that little just helped. Ears are just so hard. In my portrait tutorial video that's coming out, which is gonna be like an 18, 16 by 20 inch painting, which is quite big actually, we're going to paint a really in-depth ear. So that's gonna be pretty crazy. And I'm excited. I'm quite excited. All right. Now, let me give you the other view, let's also clean up. Oh, you know what I wanna do? There's one more thing, y'all. This is really wonderful. We're gonna clean up this side with some reflect, reflected light, because there certainly is some. And um, that wasn't great right there of me. So we're gonna use this to finesse.
this chin can be destroyed a little more, like a lot more actually. Yeah. Something like that. And honestly, I need to bring this up. That's the neck. And then for what I want to do is I want to bring like this a little lighter green on this side just for fun. And this is actually more yellow. Right, you see how subtle that is, but it's kind of nice. It's kind of nice. Okay. Something's pissing me off about the chin still. Okay. Alright, we're ending. We are ending very soon. Jeez Louise, with that stroke. You see that? Okay, done. That's it. All right, let me show you. Gosh, I'm hungry. So there's something, right, when I'm standing back, I see totally more issues. Um, like it's something with the hair. It's something, it's something with this part of the forehead and then it has to come over more. It's like almost horizontal. I could probably fix that and I'm going to. Let's zoom in for you one more. And this color again is wacky, so it's not great, but. Here's not great. Parts of the hair aren't great but luminance value. Not too shabby, not too shabby. All right, let's see if we can fix that forehead. So this is a good example of sort of stepping back and seeing something. And honestly, the eye, I feel like the eye could be bigger. Anyone see that? Oh. Anyone see that this eye can have a little more light to it? 
white. So I might finish that issue. All right, let's think of what we really want to do here, what we want to change with this forehead because this is some surgery that goes down here. So I think it's like that. I should have put pigment on here, but and I think it's like. I think it's like this. This goes past. Yep. Yep. And then it goes like this. Yep. Yep, that will do it, don't get. I mean, very subtly. I mean, this is like a half an inch switch, but I think it totally brings the forehead back to looking like. It looks to me as if the right eye, her right R, R left is a bit too large, too round and too dark. Yeah, Carla Rose. So this is like a representation of her eye. It's not, you know, actually her eye. Let's see, I mean, I could just play with this. People have saying that and like, am I tripping when I'm saying it's like obviously suggested it's not developed at all? Like, I feel like that's obvious. You know, those are some eyelashes. Yeah, the nose is, the nose is wonked out. So that's all I'm gonna do for the eye, okay, people? I know, I'm not gonna put lashes on this side. It's just too much, it's too delicate. It's just all represented. I gotta, you guys are giving me anxiety now. You guys are, the laundry list. How many people are in this still? 98. He was like, this needs this, this needs this. Yeah, I know, a lot of it needs a lot of that. You know what I mean? But. We're not gonna do almost any more. Cause I've been sitting here for like four hours. Oops. Eyelashes on that one, right? That looks fine. D. Kinda looks cross-eyed, not really. Um. Okay, I just need to fill in. Yeah, no, I'm done. This is like it. We're not, we're not gonna work on this anymore. Alla prima, I mean, I'm not, this is in a sketchbook, right? This is just a painting sketch. Obviously a longer sketch than normal. So I'm not really tripping about it, but I'm just saying all of you bombarding me. What do we wanna do again? We just need to fix that skin tone. And then I'll show you the view one more time and then we'll sign off. If you're just joining or again, people, I'm coming out with a portrait tutorial um, very soon, a bunch of portraits, and I think it's gonna be only like 30 bucks. I'll post some free videos on YouTube, but <clears throat> there's gonna be like a two hour full in-depth mixing paint, materials, brushes, taking these photos. I had a huge photo shoot. I filmed everything, how to, how to get good 
lighting, like this lighting is arguably my favorite tri Rembrandt triangle. Um, really good lighting for portraiture. So we'll go into all that in the video. And I don't know when it's coming out, but probably sometime in April, maybe end of April. Dang, I need that to be Dorka. I need that to be way Dorka. Yeah, that looks pretty schmexy, I'd say. There we are. Oh. And then, honestly, you gotta bring the... Please make the dark side cheek highlight shorter. It will make the nose look better. Hmm. The dark side cheek highlight. Dark side cheek highlight. So what are you talking about? What a baby. What the bababe? Um, lower portion. I don't know, guys. I can't. I can't keep listening to you. I think you're all crazy, in my opinion. Just kidding. But I'm going crazy, and I need to hop off, drink some water, and get some dinner. Um, I just want to fill in this real quick. Um. But honestly, everyone telling me what they think should be changed is great observation practice, so I welcome it, and I'm for it. Painting is a lot, is like 20% operational skills as in operating a paintbrush and paint, but it's 80% observing and be able to compare and contrast visual, visually, visual comprehension. Um, and that's it. So I'm going to give you the final little shot. And I think it looks way better with that slight adjustment, people of the world. So yeah, really amped on that. Um, I want to give a... Uh, Let's give a nice uh, zebra in the chat. Zebra in the chat, everybody. Clap it up for yourselves for this nice little marathon. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna text my uh, <clears throat> girlfriend right now. Let's see what she says. Also, can you see this? Like, you see the difference of saturation? That's what it kind of looks like. I mean, this is on my phone, I guess, but this looks pretty banging to me. Oh, I wanted to make this a little bigger. Nice, let, let me see all those zebras. Um. Okay, so I will make this slightly bigger. I gotta get, I gotta get back to my position, or else I'm gonna mess it all up. You, you saw how much one stroke can change it all, right? So what's to make sure this is this last, 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 last stroke is not going to mess it up? I want a different brush, you know, something like that. Something a little soft. Oh, okay. Um, and I'm talking about sort of the shadow in her chin area. Can I go, let's go all the way zoomed in, why not? Now what color could that be? Something like this.
Yeah, but then gotta get it dark again. Yep, like that. Oh, excuse those crazy sound effects by moi. All right. Calling it quits. All right, everybody, so stay tuned. I don't know when the next YouTube video is gonna be. I'm doing a lot of like, I'm going a whole portrait session this month, all portraits. I'm doing like training to portrait paint, um, train to draw portraits in 10 minutes, like drawing. Um, we're doing two big portraits actually of my girlfriend again, because I took unbelievable photos. You know what? I'll give you a sneak peek. How about that? How about that stream? If you stayed this long, I'll bless you with some crazy photos. Um, not even crazy photos, just cool photos. So where do I add this? Do I add this here? Whoa, it's quite big. So look at how cool that is. So that's going to be another painting. That's going to be another big painting which I'm really amped about. Um, and then there's gonna be another more traditional one like this, like I'd call this one very traditional, right? And now we're gonna hide that so people, you know, I guess you could just go back in the video and see. But I would call this very traditional. It's very like traditional. I love traditional. It's like my favorite. So we're doing two big paintings, one more big traditional. It's gonna be super rendered out, way bigger. It's gonna be like this big. And then we do another one. Anyways, that's it. Nothing but love, fun stream. You know, I stream on Patreon also. Um, that's it. Thanks guys. End in the stream.